الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحبل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Dear brothers and sisters I'm your host brother Abdul Qadir Ali Ambe and this is your program Islamica and today we are talking about the Ashura the tenth day of Muharram which is an important day in Islam and what we are saying in Islam we don't mean only the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam because as we all are aware that all the religions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are Islam and this day the nine the tenth day of Muharram is the day Allah, Allah gave success to Moses over his enemy and the enemy of Islam Farwa, Fir'aun. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Sahih Muslim of Hadith Aisha first, she said, Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah be pleased with her. Um, the early days of Islam, of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to fast and Ashura before Allah Ta'ala revealed, uh, before Allah Ta'ala make Ramadan obligatory upon the believers and the Arabs they used to fast as well and then when Allah Ta'ala revealed Ramadan then he stopped alayhi salatu was salam and when he immigrated to Medina when he immigrated to Medina Rasul alayhi salam find the Jews are fasting and then he asked them and the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim and then they said the reason we're fasting this is the day Allah gave success to Musa over Fir'aun over Farwa, the enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the enemy of Islam. And then he said, Alayhi salatu salam, we have more right to Moses than them, and also we should fast. And also in another narration in Sahih Muslim, Abu Rasallam said, if Allah Ta'ala give me a long life and I leave for next year, I will fast the ninth and the tenth to be different than them. But he did not reach alayhi salatu was salam. That's why it's sunnah to fast the ninth and the tenth or day before with the Ashura and day after with the Ashura. Whatever you could do, you should fast. And also, Sheikh Zayn al has mentioned that some people, they have a shower on the day of Ashura and they put some kuhl on their eyes and they put hinna on their beards and on their hair and so on. All the hadith, on that it's all fabricated and it's all weak and then we, we should not act upon this kind of a hadith upon this kind of narrations then it's very important that we fast inshallah the day of ashura and the day of tasu'a the ninth and the tenth or the tenth and the eleventh which means Friday and Saturday or Saturday and Sunday and also there's some hadith 
which forbids, which all authentic as well, to single out fasting on Monday and uh, on Fridays, and also on Saturdays and also on Sundays. But here, now with the Ashura, or and with the uh, Yom Arafah and so on, this kind of it's called in Islam the Wat Sabab, the fasting or the worship for reasons. That's why Sheikh Al Imam Ibn Ruslan said, Wajzim bi idkhali dawati sababi, warwi anil imami dhannan tusibi. Ay, dawati sabab, it's definitely involved. Like the forbidden time of the salah, like after Asr, after Fajr. But if there is a salah with reason, like Tahiyat al Masjid, or um, uh, and so on, then you have to do it. That doesn't get, is, is not part of the general forbidding. Similarly, of this Saturday and Sundays and Fridays, if you do not single it out, you fast on uh, Friday and Saturday or Saturday and Sunday, inshallah, it's fine and it's because of, of reasons then it's very important that we take care of this. And the last point, not least, before I take your calls, is some people, they think that the Sunnis are happy of the killing of uh, the grandson of the Prophet And no Sunni on earth who is happy of the killing of the grandson of the Prophet But we don't celebrate for the death of anybody. Similarly, the way we, we don't celebrate for the birth of anybody, even including our beloved Prophet wasalam, nor his birthday, nor his death day, we don't celebrate. Similarly, Umar is being killed. Abu Bakr is, uh, and uh, Uthman is being killed, and Ali is being killed, and Hussein is being killed. Radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with all of them and put them in the high ranks in paradise. Then we should not single out any celebration or any rituals for anybody for their death or for their birthday. May Allah reward you all and protect us all and make us those who follow the Quran and the son of our beloved Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. And now, shall I take the calls? First caller, please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother, is it uh, right to say that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born in the year of elephants? Please let me know this here. Yeah? He, 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 was, he was born what? Sorry? He was born in the year of elephants. Year is of elephants. Is like that? Yeah. Yes. There is no problem with that, insha'Allah. Okay. Exactly. Can you tell me any proof for this? Can you tell me any proof for this? Yeah, there's some of the seerah. It's been mentioned that he was born on, on, on that year. Some of the books of the seerah has mentioned, and some of the books of the Islamic history has mentioned that he was born on that year. But where the conflict is, is the day. There is no clear proof of the day that he, he was born, alayhi salatu wasalam, whether it's the ninth, or, or, or 11th or 12th and uh, or 15 or more than that than that that's where the argument comes but as far as the agree that he was born salam the year of the elephant that the year the elephant attacked Mecca with the Abyssinian troops Abraha May Allah Ta'ala cast them all, those who tried to damage the Kaaba before, and those who are planning to damage the Kaaba now or in the future. May Allah curse them all. Jazakillahu khayran. Next call, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I've got three questions. Is that okay with you? Three is, is quite a lot, but. 
Is that not okay? I would just ask you to then. Okay. Barakallah fiq. Yes. Sheikh, I'm married and my husband works full time, five days a week. And when he's not working weekends, he spends a lot of time from 11 or 12 a day and this is unfriendly. And I can't go with him because he says, no, I'm going with them so just he stay home. So I'm by myself at home and we ha we don't have kids. Mm -hmm. So um, when I try to talk about him, he says, you don't have right to talk about me, just meet together. Okay. Um, my, so what, um, can you advise me what to do? Okay, that's that, number two. My second question is my husband, my family lives is like back home mm -hmm. and I haven't seen them for so long. Mm -hmm. So I asked my husband to travel with me as Muhrim because I'm a Muslim woman. Okay. And he said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to travel with you, so travel by yourself or stay. So what do I have to do? Jazakallah khair. Barakallah khair. Make me dua for me and the, our sisters and brothers in Palestine. Jazakallah khair. May Allah reward you all. That, that's a very good uh, reminder that you reminded us, all of us, may Allah ta'ala, protect our brothers and sisters in Palestine and protect uh, um, uh, them from the missiles of, uh, of the enemy. May Allah Ta'ala make it easier for them and, and also inshallah we should take any part that we, we can support these people with their uh, gratuities and uh, their casualties and, and alhamdulillah the brothers are doing uh, a lot of fundraising especially the, and, uh, through Islam Journal and uh, all these Muslim charities. Please and please and please brothers and sisters support them as much as you can. Jazakumullah khairan. Um, my advice to this brother who is married to this sister and they have not any children and and he works in, uh, five days a week and bless him is very important but also the woman has a right upon us. Our sisters has a right upon us to give them a time, to spend some time with them, to help them, to look after them, to entertain them, to and, uh, go out with them take them where and uh, if we are going out and so on and and it's not right to lock them in the house and say oh you stay in the house and you stay indoors and you cannot uh, come with me and I'm and also I'm not going to take you to anywhere and uh, I'm, I'm going to galaban with my friends that's not right and this brother and all the other brothers and myself we should all fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to spend some time with our family with our children and give them a time, may Allah SWT reward you all. The second question, who wants to travel to her family, it's your responsibility, my respected brother, to take her and not her. And subhanAllah, she, she's the one who's supposed to fight that I want, I want to travel to my family, and uh, you are the one who's supposed to say, no, you're not traveling without me going with you and without mahram. Where is, where, where is the ghayrah of the, of, of, of the Muslim man? What happened to us? We should not let our wives and our daughters to travel by themselves and going and, uh, wherever they want to go. The Muslims, they never used to be like this. And we should go with them we should protect them, we should be on their side. May Allah guide us this brother and all the other brothers and myself and we should not do that. We should, and it's our responsibility and to take our sisters if they're going to visit their family or going to visit Allah's house in Mecca and Medina and Jerusalem, we should take them. We should take them. We should not let them travel by themselves. Because it's forbidden and it's a clear haram. May Allah Ta'ala guide us all. Next call, please. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh. Uh, uh, Sheikh, I just want to ask you a question about su Surah to Tawbah, Ayah 29. So mm -hmm. if you can answer. Uh, uh, to, told me that question uh, because I just spoke to one of my uh, non-Muslim, so I just seen. Uh, can you just clarify the uh, 
the ayah, ayah 29, uh, Surah Tawbah. Ayah 29, Surah yes. Tawbah. Ya Allah, if no, then inshallah we'll make it the next episode, we will, inshallah we'll talk about it. That would be, be nice. Inshallah. Alright, cheers, thank you. Jazakallah khair. Ayah 29. وقالت اليهود عزير بن الله وقالت النصارى المسيح بن الله ذلك قول بأفواههم يظاهرون قول الذين كفروا من قبل قاتلهم الله أن يفكون وقالت اليهود عزير بن الله the Jews they said Uzair is the son of is the son of God son of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and the Christians they said Jesus is the son of God and that's they claim and that's equal to the word of the non-believers before Allah Ta'ala cursed them how do they understand and that's how that's what it means that they should not go and they should not and uh, they should they shouldn't say that Allah Ta'ala has a son Allah Ta'ala lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakullahu kufu wa nahad Allah has no son and Allah Ta'ala has no daughters and Allah Ta'ala has no children and he's not in need of it may Allah Ta'ala make us those who understand the rights of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Jazakumullahu Khairan Next call please Assalamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum Assalam Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh And Jazakallah Khair Shaykh And Shaykh can I ask you in Somali? Try to be quick Alright سوردي كثير تاع مركي والدك وقد عاني سيد مركو إلهي أولاد هاي إلهي والدك إلهي يسوكري مركي على صغير كها أنا حريته وقد سوردي عن آياتي كتاك الله خيرا آيات وحوية أن لا أرمنبا إن شاء الله أن سيستيز أسكي عن الفريز أم which says about in, uh, the parents and uh, um, let me remember the beginning of the ayah and the sh inshallah I will remember it and inshallah and I, I, will say, I, will, I will say it to you inshallah just she's asking about that word that an uh, ayah which means that we should be we should pray to, to, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our parents that who brought us up when we, when we were little shall I remember the ayah where it is next caller please Assalamu alaikum sir Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, I just want to ask you one question um, when you change in the baby's nappy does that break your wudu? One, one what? when you change in the baby's nappy if you touch his or her private party yeah Private part, yes. Okay. Then shall I, you should do your wudu, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Okay. Okay. Jazakallah khairan. Barakallah fikum. Next call, please. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, my sister. I'm going to talk to you in the Somali. Lakhsa. I'm going to talk to you in English. Lakhsa. I'm going to talk to you in English. I'm going to talk to you in English. When I suffer tamaha, you should not travel. The sister is asking if she does not have mahram and can she and uh, travel. I said no, she should not travel unless it's a necessity, life and death, or like if she is moving of this country. And moving back home or moving and, and, you know, into Muslim land, then that journey, even though it's not allowed, but it's an uh, excusable, but just travel and come back and travel and come back, no. And it's highly unlikely that she does not have uh, anybody, uh, husband or brother or sister, but the. Uh, 
husband or brother or uncle or an, uh, maternal uncle or paternal uncle, then it's very important that we should see how important is this. And we should be very careful that necessity, necessity, necessity. Next call, please. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I think I lost that caller. Next caller, please. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khairan. Then it's very important that we walls with Allah's religion we should be very careful with that. It is very important that because our Asallam said in the authentic hadith clearly it's not allowed for a woman who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the last day to travel without mahram without mahram that she should not travel even the scholars as we said a lot of times they said even the hajj is not obligatory upon her if she does not have a mahram to take her to the hajj which is the, one of the most important pillars in Islam. Then we should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa jazakumullahu khayran. Wa sallahu wa sallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Stay tuned. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ati'u allaha wa ati'u al-rasoola wa uli al-amri minkum. Civil unrest inside Syria has now become a civil war. Tens of thousands have been killed and thousands more displaced. Ummah Welfare Trust has distributed food provisions to families inside Syria and to refugees in Jordan. £150 will provide a family with an emergency relief pack. Please donate and support our brothers and sisters with Ummah Welfare Trust, operating on a 100% donations policy. You all know that here at Sam's, we've been offering you our delicious secret mix of spices on our chicken for over 20 years. But did you know about our mega meal deals we have on right now? You didn't? Well, what are you waiting for? Come and get our tasty chicken wraps, two for three pounds. Succulent chicken fillet tower burgers, two for four pounds. Feast on a family special for only nine pounds 99, giving you more for less. Sam's, the home of great tasting chicken. Maher Zayn is back with an incredible new album. Featuring 14 amazing tracks. Forgive Me is out in stores and on iTunes. Read Foundation have been implementing educational and welfare projects in the developing world since 1994. We have 340 schools educating 75,000 orphans and needy children for our own 4,000 teachers, making it one of the largest educational NGOs of rural Pakistan. £30 per month provides food, clothing, medical care and education. Please donate now. Visit us on readfoundation.org.uk. Hargala Diamond, luxury holiday homes and a great investment opportunity located in Tunisia. This resort of 120 luxury apartments has segregated hammam, children's play area, swimming pool and much more. All in a halal environment, two minutes from the beach. For more information, call us on 079611 70259 or visit hargala-diamond.com. Great investments with great returns. Ibrahim College's Route 42 weekend seminar will dive deep into Imam Nawawi's collection of 40 hadith under the instruction of eminent scholars. 
This weekend seminar will give you more than 42 lessons for personal development, more than 42 ways to strengthen your relationship with your Lord, a 42-point roadmap to success. So enroll yourself and your loved ones right now by visiting ibrahimcollege.org.uk or call us on 0207 Human Appeal, in partnership with Syria Relief, presents Sounds of Light 2012, featuring award-winning artist Maha Zayn. Islamic trio Native Dean. Yahya Hawa. Visit soundsoflight.org or call 0161 225 National Halal Food Group UK would like to take this opportunity to wish the Muslim Ummah a peaceful and prosperous New Year. Civil unrest inside Syria has now become a civil war. Tens of thousands have been killed and thousands more displaced. Umma Welfare Trust has distributed food provisions to families inside Syria and to refugees in Jordan. £150 will provide a family with an emergency relief pack. Please donate and support our brothers and sisters with Umma Welfare Trust, operating on a 100% donations policy. <laughs> أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله the sister who asked us and uh, who asked me about the the ayah for the parents, I remember the one in Surah Al Ahqaf, um, ayah number 15, Allah Insana Allah Subhanahu wa Taala when he says about and uh, the parents, we should be good to them. And that, inshallah, in Surah Al Haqqaf, she can find that sister. And inshallah, the other also, when, uh, if she go through the tafsir, the other ayat will be brought in, the, in uh, will be found in the same place. Um, which Allah, Allah said as well, and uh, about the parents. وَأَوْصَيْنَا الْإِنْسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا حَمَلَتُ أُمُّهُ وَأَوْصَيْنَا الْإِنْسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍّ وَلَا تَرَاهُمَا وَتَقُلْ قُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَأَفْضِلْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي الصَّغِيرَا خَرَبْكُمْ عَلَمَ مَا فِي نُفُوسِكُمْ إِنْ تَكُونُوا صَالِحِينَ فَإِنَّهُ كَانَ لَأَوَّابِينَ غَفُورًا وَأَذِلْ قُرْبَ حَقَهُ الْمِسْكِينَ وَالْمِنُ السَّبِيلِ وَلَا تُبَذِّلْ تَبْذِلِلَ إِنَّ الْبَذِّلِنَ كَانُوا إِخْوَانَ الشَّيَاطِينَ وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِرَبِّهِ كَفُورًا That's the phrase with the sister she was looking for, insha'Allah. وَلَزَاهَ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا Next caller, please. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother, I want to ask you one question. I see that the TV screen, the shu'ara is 24 of this month. What's the shu'ara? And another thing is if, for example, I'm fasted, for example, the Friday and Saturday, um, because I missed the last Ramadan few days, um, so I think it's like um, with sunnah to the qillah um, for if I'm fasted that two days. Inshallah, and uh, some scholars, they say and uh, that you can... Uh, first, Ashura is the day that Allah gave success to Musa over Fir'aun. And that's why we are fasting, because the real of Bani Israel, they used to fast, and that's why we are fasting as well. And to show that, and also we are very pleased that Allah Ta'ala gave success to Musa over his enemy and the enemy of Islam. And that's the reason for it. Your second question, if there were qada on you, 
that there was some fasting that you have to make up of Ramadan. Some scholars, they said, you have to do the, the make, making up Ramadan first, and then you do your, uh, your Ashura or an uh, Arafah or an, uh, sh sh even the city of Shawwal. And some scholars, they said, no, because you have this for the whole year, but this is occasion, occasions which came particular days, then you should fast. You can, you can fast and then you, you make up your, and, uh, the other days of, and, uh, you're making up fasting of Ramadan, you can, you can make it up any, any time of the year. You don't have a problem with that. Some scholars, they say that, and inshallah, what I'll advise you is that you can fast Friday and Saturday. Friday is the 9th and Saturday is the 10th, which is the day we're supposed to fast. And if you could not make, if you could not fast on Friday, then you can fast on Saturday and Sunday. That means either day before with the day before or with the day after. Then the Ashura, which is the most important day, is on Saturday. Wadizakillah khayran. Next caller, please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I need to ask uh, a question. I work in the hospice and uh, we look after the case that cancer patients in their last days. Okay. And when they die, uh, we do their last offices, which means we just prepare them, clean them, and then take them into mortuary. Okay. So there are male patients as well. Okay. Uh, I want to ask, is it okay for me as a female, as a Muslim, to do that? Or am I committing sin? Yes, as a Muslim who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who wants to, wants to follow Allah's deen, you should not wash the body of the males after they die. You should not wash them. You should let the other men or the other people do that. And you do the, the girls or the women, inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And if you could not avoid that, then inshallah leave that Joanna Sala will give you better replacement. Allah will give you a better replacement because He promised that. And we should trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words. Allah Sallam said in the authentic hadith, whoever leaves something for Allah's sake, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them better replacement. And no doubt about that. You will get a better replacement, inshallah. And if you can avoid, avoid washing men and stick with washing the woman, then alhamdulillah, carry on your, your job and also keep me in your prayers. Well, Next caller, please. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum assalam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have two questions. Go ahead. The first one is uh, when your parents die or relatives, and they are going to receive the Okay. And also the second one and is when you breastfeeding, uh -huh. child and your milky and goes like uh, by accident to your, to your husband like and is he gonna be uh, am I gonna be like uh, and he's like his mother or because that's what I had. Okay. Thank you. Zakilah um, khayran. Do you you read Quran especially through? on Fridays for your parents who are dead? No. That's not in the Sunnah of the Prophet and anywhere in the Hadith of the Prophet And he did not advise us anywhere to do so. Then that's innovation, you should not do it. For your parents, remember them in your dua, remember them in your sadaqah, pay them and uh, whatever you could do, dig them a well, take and uh, do hajj or, or umrah for them. Do sadaqa for them. Always keep them in your mind, in your prayers, especially when you are in sujood. Pray for your parents. Allah Ta'ala have mercy on Allah Ta'ala have mercy on them. 
Jazakallahu khairan. The second point is, as you're breastfeeding, if some of your milk goes into you, you, your husband's tongue and uh, or his wallow something, is, is, is that going to make him like uh, your son or daughter that you breastfeed them? No. But as men, we should avoid swallowing the milk of your, of, of your wife. But inshallah, won't make you like, like you breastfeed him, no. Because the condition is that it has to be little and also when uh, to and, uh, give him some nutrition for, for that and, uh, child. That's why they said he has to be a small child. If you breastfeed, then he becomes like your son or your daughter. Wa jazakillahu khaira. Next caller, please. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hi, Sheikh. I've got one question. Go ahead, sister. I just want to know if Rukia is allowed in Islam to remove evil eye and jinn. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, Rukia is allowed. And the person can take the Rukia and uh, but it's better and as i always advise to do it yourself to do it yourself learn how to do it and do it yourself read the quran on yourself read the hadith on yourself try to do ruqya on yourself do not ask anybody else unless it's necessity and you cannot and uh, get rid of uh, that evil eye or jadu or magic or black magic and uh, then you ask somebody also who trustworthy. There's a lot of dodgy stuff going on in the market. Then you should be very careful who you're going for your ruqya and who you're asking for, the, for, for ruqya. There's a lot of people who misuse that. May Allah Ta'ala guide us to the right path. Then it's very important that you should know who you're going to. It's being recommended. Is he according to the Quran, the Son of the Prophet or He's using another shaitans and another evil and another devil, another devils. Then you should be very careful with that. What is that? Allahu khairan. Next call, please. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Akhi, can you put the volume of the TV down, inshallah? Uh, salam alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, my name is Ibrahim. I would like to ask the Sheikh regarding to the Ashura. Go ahead, um, Akhi. Um, how many supposed to do the, concern the Ashura? Is it one, two, or three, or somewhere? No, it's two. only two days, Akhi. Okay. It's two days. Either you do Friday and Saturday, mm. or you do Saturday and Sunday. Whatever you feel easy for you. If you are working on Friday, then shall I do Saturday and Sunday as a choice. You can do one day before or one day and one day after. Then it's only two. You either do Friday and Saturday or you either do Saturday and Sunday. Wa jazakallahu khairan. Next caller, please. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I have one question. Go ahead, sister. Is it, is it haram for a woman to take her eyebrow? Yes, you should not touch your eyebrow. The hadith is authentic. It's clear of hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Stay away from touching your eyebrow by any means. Jazakallahu khairan. Next caller, please. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, sister. Um, Sheikh, um, I just wanted to know um, if you could uh, explain to me clearly that um, uh, what times can we actually make dua in our salah and how? Um, sometimes, because as far as I know, that it's um, in your five salah. Yes. Um, in your sujood, you can only do it in Arabic. Yes. But when can you pray, pray, um, make dua in your own language um, and um, how? Exactly. 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 That's a very important question. Exactly. The, du the dua inside the salah should be in Arabic. The dua inside the salah should be in Arabic because this salah 
cannot be used any other language. That should be clear. On the other hand, if, and first, as I always advise the Muslims to memorize some of the, uh, of the simple dua, which Asalam used to do it, and as I said from my grandmother, Allah Ta'ala guarantee her place in paradise, she used to memorize, Allahumma Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar. And she used to sit in the corridor, and she used to sit in a, in a balcony, and she used to repeat that. And when I was little, I used to surprise. I used to be I used to get surprised from that. But Subhanallah, when I grew up and I studied, then I realized how this dua is very important. Allahumma Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar. Allahumma khfirli. Allahumma khfir li walidayya. Allahumma rahamhuma. Learn this kind of little du'as, then you can do it in your sujood. For your parents. Oh Allah, forgive my parents. Allahumma khfir li walidayya. Allahumma rahm li walidayya. Kama rabbaya li sagheer. As they brought me up when I was little. And I was in need of them. And unfortunately, a lot, a lot of people, they neglect their parents when we grew up. Allah ta'ala guide us all. Um, then it's very important that um, uh, we learn some of the small du'as that we can use in our salah. Okay, other than uh, outside the salah time, when can we do the du'as? You can do it after your salah as individual. You can do any time. The du'a has no time. And it's not like the salah that is sometimes is, is, it has sometimes it's been forbidden. No, the du'a has open times. You can do any time. Raise your hands to your Creator in your own language, especially at night, especially at night, in the middle of the night, in the darkness of the night. Raise your hands to your Lord. Cry to Him. Humble yourself to Him. Ask Him whatever you wanted of this dunya and the life here after. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him everything. The smallest thing and the biggest thing you should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you should not hesitate. And you should, as as Allah advised us, Ali Hufid Dua. Like ask Allah Ta'ala again and again and again, repeat it. Pray to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he will accept your dua. And he is the only one, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who gets happier and happier when you ask him more and more and more. But any human beings, they don't, they don't get happy regardless, even if, if your own father and mother, if you ask them a lot, they wouldn't like it. But Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he likes those who ask him all the time. Those who praised him all the time. Those who humble themselves for, Allah, for him all, all the time. Then please and please, brothers and sisters, take care of your dua. Next caller, please. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, brother, I have a, a, one question. It's uh, basically in two parts. Uh, Bismillah. Um, the question is, brother, that uh, obviously uh, there's uh, a, a lot of reward when you read your salah in the Congress, i.e. in the in the masjid or in a group of people. That's but, right. Uh, uh, when, you're, when you're at home and yes. uh, you have your marum, you have your wife and you have your daughter, uh -huh. can a, a, a husband lead the jamaat, you know, uh, for, uh, 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 with, your, with your wife or your, or, or your daughter? Um, and the other question is, if that's so, can also yeah. uh, a, a gentleman lead a, a jamaat um, when one of the female who's uh, not part of the family member, not marum, you know, yes. is, that, is that possible at all, Sheikh? Could you clarify that? Jazakallahu khairan. Yeah, yes. I mean, Jazakallahu khairan. The husband, yes, but it's very important also. Also, there's, I would like to mention something else as well, which is very important, that you can do your salah in the masjid. And then you come back and you lead the rest of your family. Also, that, that's doable. 
And on the other hand, if the masjid is far away from you and sometimes like you cannot go for whatever reason, even though it's very important that you, you, you should pray in the congregation, then you can lead your family and your maharim. And also if there's another lady in the house who a neighbor or distant relation or friend of a family, yes, she can pray with them and you can lead the prayer. No problem with that, inshallah. With Jazakallah khairan. Next call, please. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, sister. Um, I have a quick question um, for, for my mum. That's Bihar. very good that you, you are quick, inshallah, because the time is getting limited. Yeah, yeah, I was just told. Um, quick, just a quick question. Um, what is, she's, um, she's been in a lot of pain. She's got like piles. Uh -huh. uh, she's got an appointment tomorrow and she wants to fast. Okay. So she, wa she wanted to know that is it going to, because the doctors, they like, sometimes it's male doctors, they check um, like, you know, you properly in that. So she just wants to know, will, will her fast still be valid or not? That her fasting, inshallah, will be valid and that won't affect her fasting. Jazakallah khairan. Won't affect her fasting, inshallah. Next caller, please. Jazakallah khairan. Then let me go back to this, um, the topic of the salah. The salah, brothers, in congregation is very important. It's very important. And as male, as men, and Allah bless us with cars, bless us with whatever and the transport that we can use. We should pray in congregation. We should pray at the masjid. The masajid, Allah Ta'ala said, in my masajid, Allah man amana billahi wal yawm al-akhir. Those who attend the masajid is those who believe in Allah SWT on the last day. Then it's very important that we take care of the Salat al-Jama'ah. That's what Allah said. I will... I wish I, I will request the, the Imam to lead the prayer, one of the people to lead the prayer, and then I go out and, and ban the house of those who did not come out for Salat al-Jama'ah, who did not come out for the congregation prayer. Then it's very, it's, it's that dangerous, that serious. Rasulullah cannot ask to ban the, the people's houses for something easy and simple. Jazakumullah khairan. That's what you all, that's what we've been able to cover of your time. والسلام عليكم ورحمه وبركاته يا ايها الذين امنوا اطيعوا الله واطيعوا الرسول واولي الامر منكم